Hello everyone, Jacolo here, and welcome to Red Eyes Month. For the next four weeks, the channel's content will be filled with nothing but red eyes. Today's video is a new special segment, which I decided to call Deck Craft. The main idea is to analyze the deck, look at multiple possible variants, strengths, weaknesses, and by the end of the episode, decide on what to use. In this premiere episode, we will be focusing on Red Eyes FTK. The deck revolves around the interaction between two cards, the ever-loved Red Eyes Fusion and Infernal Fire Blast. The interaction comes from the fact that Infernal Fire Blast deals damage equal to the original attack of one Red Eyes Black Dragon on the field, and the monster summoned with Red Eyes Fusion is called Red Eyes Black Dragon while it's on the field. Now it all comes down to determining what Red Eyes Fusion monsters should be chosen by the deck. It's natural to gravitate towards the highest attack monsters, there are two monsters worth 3500 attack, the vanilla Meteor Black Dragon and its retrained Meteor Black Comet Dragon. Out of those two, only one is an effect monster, so choosing that one is quite natural. Especially since the effect also contains burning capabilities, working itself really well into the deck's main strategy. Now that we established what we need, let's look at the ratios. One Infernal Fire Blast will deal 3500 points of damage, and with Meteor Black Comet Dragon's effect, at least 1200 points of damage will be dealt. That puts the opponent at 5700 life points lost, meaning that two copies of Infernal Fire Blast must be resolved in order to FTK. That would have been quite of an issue if not for the existence of Serious Spell, a quick play that copies the effect of a normal spell card used earlier in the chain. Since both Infernal Fire Blast and Serial Spell are unsearchable, the deck needs a lot of draw power. Does it mean it's forced to rely on it and basically be a glass cannon? I would say yes and no. There is of course the pure draw power way, however a more combo-centric approach is also possible, mostly thanks to the existence of Verity Anaconda. So now let's look at each example deck separately. So this is the pure draw... Mm -hmm deck, the pure draw build, with triple card of consonants and we have triple the blood right dragon as target uh, for this draw 2 card. We have card of red stone, triple sacred sword of seven stars, triple summoner's art and the red eyes black dragons which are targets for both card of red stone and sacred sword. We're also playing tune table of content and the tune red eyes and red eyes tune dragon pardon which also is a target for Sacred Sword and can be paid as cost for cards of red stone. There's also Into the Void because it's a plus one and we don't care if we discard our cards at the end of the turn because there won't be an end of the turn. A Lord of Darkness because everything is dark, card destruction because why the hell not, and triple red eyes insight so we can surge our red eyes fusion. There is also Infernal Fire Blast and Serial Spell, Meteor Black Comet Dragon at two copies, because why not? You can also play one. So this deck plays a lot of draw power. We have Triple Card of Consonants, Double Card of Red Stone, Triple Sacred Sword of Seven Stars, Triple Allure and One Into the Void, giving us 12 draw cards. Also. Well, 13 if you also um, add card destruction to the mix. We also have triple summoner's art, triple tomb table of content, and triple red eyes inside, giving us 9 search cards. And that basically is 22 cards that can replace themselves. That is a lot. Giving the deck pretty decent consistency, but as everything that's very solitaire, it's very sustainable. It's a glass cannon, basically. Should an ash happen, it's no big deal, there are more cards that can do the searching and drawing, so it's a setback, but it's not a major setback. The turn ends when Drawn and Lockbird happens. Or... Or... When Meteor Black Comet Dragon is negated. 
or when Red Ice Fusion is ashed. That's when the turn ends, because there are no other plays. The choke points are in the activation of Red Ice Fusion and the effect of Meteor Black Comet Dragon. Of course the deck can win without it, but you will need Double Infernal Fire Blast and, and Serial Spell or Triple Infernal Fire Blast. Which is doable, but it's not likely. Well, this build is a bit different. It's more combo heavy. We still have a lot of draw spells with Triple Allure, Destiny Draw, Golden Bamboo Sword, Trade In, Into the Void and Card Destruction. But it also plays cards like Destiny Hero Dogma, Destiny Hero Plasma, Peril Exceed, Paratic Dragon of Tefnuit, Codebreaker, the Neo Space Package, Hero Kids, Reinforcements of the Army, Living Fossil, and Divine Sword Phoenix Blade. And that is because this deck's main focus is going to the Warrior Package. You're activating, you're using Isolde, summoning Isolde, getting the Hero Kid out, most likely dropping two spells, a cur Cursed Bamboo Sword and probably the Phoenix, the Phoenix Blade, and you're going from there. You can do... you can summon Dugaris, you can summon the Gusto Emerald for more draws, you can loop Saryuja, there's a lot of things you can do, especially if Codebreaker Package is used. At the end of the day, at the end of the turn, you want summer, you want to use Predoplant, Verti, Anaconda to send that Red Ice Fusion and to make that Meteor Black Comet Dragon for that sweet, sweet FDK. This deck is a bit more... how should I say it's stable? It does have additional plays, so even if the FDK... The FTK is the end game, of course, but it's not like the deck relies on it. That's why we have cards like the Nightmares here, or all of those Saryujas. There are other plays this deck can do. FTK is just one of them. It can still go into very well known and beloved, in some cases. Link Beatdown. However, due to that fact, there are a bit more choke points than in the previous game, in the previous deck. Mostly due to the fact that you should Neo Space Connector be negated, then there's nothing you can do. You cannot summon Aqua Dolphin, you cannot draw any more cards unless you opened godly and you have everything or any this is very glassy well this is an amazing glass cannon but it's still a very glass cannon and this is basically what we'll, what we will be going with double red eyes black dragon double dogma double plasma triple power, parallel exceed one tefnuit one zero day triple connector one aqua dolphin Triple Hero Kid, Double Fire Flint Lady, Double Renaud, Triple Allure, Double Destiny, Triple Bamboo, Triple Fire Blast, One Into the Void, One Red Eye Fusion, One, Re one Rota, Triple Trade-In, Triple Serial Spell, Triple Broken, Triple Curse Bamboo Swords, One Divine Phoenix Blade, and One Living Fossil. The extra deck is basically the same, except I swapped one level one number 60 to goddess the timeless for a goki the power load ogre so we can have an additional boss monster the side deck is basically a smokescreen side deck we have one red eyes black dragon one bladder eyed dragon triple red eyes tune double cards of red stone one red eyes fusion double insight triple summoners art and double tomb table of content the side deck is basically to swap the combo part of the deck for the draw so we are swapping from one part one uh, from the draw part to the combo part and vice versa in game one we're probably going to go with this but we are going to go with this 
uh, we're going to lose game 2, I assume, and in game 3, we're going to go for the draw and see where that goes. So that is basically the plan for this deck. How it's going to go? I... I don't know. I'm nervous because this will be the first time I'm doing competitive Red Eyes FTK. But, well, we'll see it on stream on Sunday. I'll see you all then. Chocobo signing out. Peace!